in the Sacramento metro area, this is the video for you. There's a lot of stuff going on, it's crazy. So if you're buying or selling in the Sacramento real estate market, let's get started, let's talk a little bit about it, give you the pros and cons and tell you exactly what's going on right now. It's getting good. Welcome to Sacramento's number one YouTube channel for all real estate news regarding Sacramento and the surrounding areas. So if that's you, hit that subscribe button and that bell will bring you bi-weekly content. We also go live every Wednesday at 5.30. So tune in, let's get going, and let's talk a little Sacramento right now. <clears throat> all right, guys, it's getting good in the market. When I say getting good, it's like a telenovela at this point. It's getting kind of crazy in the market as far as for buyers and sellers. Interest rates are going up. Everyone's guessing that by December, we're going to be somewhere close to the eights or even sooner. Everyone's always been kind of wrong. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the market as far as what I've been seeing. I've been out in the market pretty much every single day. I mean, it's hard to find a day that I don't talk to at least 15 to 20 realtors, people in the market. And I'm talking to probably about maybe 15 to 20 clients a day um, or clients or, or people involving transactions. So there's a definite feeling of confusion in the market for people. Um, normally what I'm saying is like, if you're a buyer, you're kind of saying to yourself, look, interest rates are getting up there. So what I want to do right now is if I'm going to buy, I want to get a deal, but there's not a lot of inventory that people really, really want, right? A lot of houses that are on the market are things that people have already passed up on and they're not really like keen on, right? So we're not seeing a whole lot of new inventory hit the market on Friday because Friday is usually that day. If you're a listing agent, you know what I mean. Friday is the day that you normally maximize the days on the market by going Friday, having open houses Saturday and Sunday, and you kind of kick it off that way. So what we're seeing right now is that on Friday in the Sacramento metro area, and this is kind of one of those things that's happening all over the place, we are not getting a whole lot of new listings. And so a lot of people are saying, look, you know, interest rates are getting up higher. I can see some of these houses that have been on the market for two months, but those aren't for me. I'm not a big fan of those houses. But my problem is that on Friday, I'm not seeing a lot of houses pop up. And the houses that I am seeing pop up, they're still going pretty fast. So what I'm saying is this market, you got to identify unicorn quick. You got to figure out what areas, there's not a whole lot of inventory, what kind of floor plans are moving. And if you're looking for one of those houses that flies, and they do fly. If a house is priced properly in this market, it will still fly. I was in a bidding war on Friday, 12 offers in, and the house went at four, I think it was like 425, 450 or something. It went way over ask um, because of smart pricing. Now, for listing agents out there, I will plead. I will, I'm on my hands and knees right now. Don't take a listing that you don't think you can sell at the price point. It's throwing off our market. Pricing is absolutely crushing our market because a lot of times people go high, and then two weeks later, they kind of reduce, and they don't really know what they're doing. Price correctly, price aggressively, and let's get some of this inventory going and get our market kind of fired up. Now, as far as buyers are looking at maybe hitting the eights somewhere towards the end of this year, right? Or could be sooner, could be later, but everyone's looking at now that we're in the sevens for interest rates, eights are a possibility. And it's a freaky thing for a lot of people because even at sevens, you're seeing your price point jump sky high. Right now, you're not able to afford houses that you were able to afford maybe a month or two ago. So it's getting to be kind of a scary place. And it doesn't look like the, I mean, the pedal seems to be down and it seems like we're going into even higher interest rates. And this is scaring a whole lot of people because they're saying, look, I know I should be waiting for a deal. I know I should be jumping in. But like, you know, if I wait for a deal, look what happened this week. I mean, this week we're in the sevens. Last week we're in the sixes. There's a big change happening from week to week. We don't know what next week is going to be like. But I would say right now for buyers that are kind of confused, and I will also say for buyers right now who are actually in contract, like let's say you're in contract and you've been in contract for like three weeks. Three weeks ago, you got maybe high fives, maybe low sixes. And now you're thinking, you know what? I'm not sure about the house. Sellers are using that for leverage and they're keeping you in the deal and saying, look, if you want to back out of the deal, you know, back out of the deal. But we fully understand the idea that if you find another house that you like, Tomorrow, the next day, you're going to be at seven when with our house that you're in contract with right now, you're high fives, low sixes. So I think a lot of sellers are using that to their advantage too if they have people in contract. They're being very, very cheap, you'd say, about like what they're willing to give because they know if a buyer does walk right now, 
um, and they jump into a house, they could be a whole point higher of an interest rate. So that's something that I'm seeing right now. Um, low inventory, like I said, and I'm not considering the bloat, the stuff that's been out there for two to three months. Those things have been there. Those things are, there's, you know, there's a lot of overpriced going out there. Some sellers still don't want to negotiate on pricing and it's just a lot of kind of bloat. But what I'm talking about is this stuff popping on the market on Friday. I live in Gold River. There's maybe two houses. Those houses have been sitting forever. Everyone's looked at those houses and kind of like, eh, not really interested. Either they're overpriced or they're not handled the floor plans. But the big problem in areas like Gold River is that Friday, we don't get a whole lot of inventory. Last Friday, I don't think there was even one house that popped on the market in Gold River. So if you have an area or you have an itching for a Gold River, for Folsom, for Rockland, for Whitney Ranch, you're not going to get a whole lot of new stuff popping on the market on Friday. Now, as we get into our seasonal slowdown, you're probably going to get less houses that desirable houses popping on the market. So just kind of be aware of that. It's not going to start getting better. People are like, yeah, you know, don't worry. Inventory is going to pick up the pace. We're going to be going. This is this. Usually this is the time of the year where everything gets just slower. It just is what it is. It gets slower. People don't want to sell their homes because they're saying, I don't want to do open houses during the holiday season. You know, the weather's horrible. Um, I'm planning a nice party for the holidays. I just don't want to deal with that. And in Sacramento, it's kind of a known fact that if you sell your house during spring and in summer, you're going to get a lot more traffic, especially a lot of that Bay Area traffic that's looking to relocate before the school year starts. So a lot of people during this time of the year, I mean, you know, go to the airport, you're going to see a lot of realtors heading to Cabo San Lucas. So this time of the year, it's definitely slower. Um, so for all you people who are looking for a specific place, maybe Grant Bay Los Lagos, maybe Rockland, Whitney Ranch or Whitney Oaks, maybe even Gold River, don't expect to see a whole lot of houses pop on the market. Now, here's where it gets tricky for the sellers because a lot of sellers are like, you know what? I got a house in East Sacramento. I'm going to throw it up on the market and there's not a lot out there. So let me see. Now, the, the, the trick right now is the fact that you're having a less, less amount of buyers that can actually qualify to buy your house, which is going to also mess you up up. What I mean by that is, let's say you talk to a, a client, uh, you know, someone who's looking to sell their house and they're like, okay. And you tell them, Hey, look, if you sell your house right now, we can get a million for it. Um, and they say to you, you know what, we're just going to list for a million one. Okay. A week goes by interest rates goes up one point that 1 million that you realistically could have sold your house for now is around maybe 950, 940, unless of course it's a unicorn house. But so that's the, the pricing dilemma that we're kind of seeing right now. Whereas like, at this point, you know, the more, the higher interest rates go, the less the buyer pool for almost any house in the United States, period. I mean, it's crazy to think, you know, people at seven, at 7% 7 what they can afford comparatively towards what they can afford at 5%. And that was only like four to five months ago, or not, not even that, like four months ago, three months ago. So it's going to be very, very crazy. All right. Godness. Hello from North Carolina. Hello. Hopefully you're having a good one over there. Um, all right, Kathleen. I have client. I have. Uh uh, I have clients pivoting to new instead of pre-owned homes in order to lock in new builder rate incentives. Ooh, yes. And Kathleen actually has a message for us. Let's get to her message right now about five communities. I think that's what we're talking about. So let's get going on these communities. And this is your new home spotlight. Interest rates got you scared, but you still really, really want a new home. Well, I have my top favorite five new home incentives as of today, Wednesday, September 28th. Let's get right to it. My number one favorite so far is Richmond American offering up to uh, as little as 4.875 um, interest uh, if you close before October 31st. So uh, for homes that actually close by December 23rd, you're looking at 4.875 for a 30-year FHA or a VA, um, or they're also offering 5.5 on a 30-year conventional fixed rate. Um, this is available for buyers between now and uh, if you lock in by October 31st. Uh, my next favorite would be Taylor Morrison. Um, they're already offering some great price cuts, but they have up to $40,000 off select models and are offering permanent and temporary buy-downs. Uh, number three would be the new home company. They have already also reduced pricing, uh, but if you get in contract by October 31st, you can move in before the new year. So 
Um, they actually have a lot right now up at Silvercrest, which is uh, one of the most beautiful um, communities out there. It's already marked down from 1.587 to 1.524. So if you're in the market for one of those big beauties, they might be your go-to right now. Um, number four would be KHOV. Uh, they're offering limited special interest rates on several quick move-in homes, and you must close by December 31st. And then last, my number five top choice would be Tim Lewis. So if you're looking to get out of the city a little bit, they have a new community in Galt um, called Cedar Creek. And their move-in special is really cool. They are including your um, appliances, washer, dryer, refrigerator, and even the window treatments. So if you guys want any more information on any of these awesome incentives, let me know. Uh, give us a ring or you can email me at markmcdonoughteam at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Kathleen. Okay. So um, one of the things we always do every single week is we go to every single new home community, look for incentives, look for um, deals that they might be having. Um, like Kathleen mentioned too, they're looking to get some of those, these homes that they have off the books. Where you're going to make your biggest hit for new homes right now is the standing inventory. I've seen some smoking deals too. So even if you're someone also in contract, like let's say you're in contract with KHOV and you're going to be closing like in two or three months, you might want to also ask them if you could switch gears and grab one of their standing inventory in instead. If you go to the standing inventory, they might let you out of your contract. You'd be good with the earnest money and all that stuff. And you could swing into a deal right now that could probably, if it's a floor plan you like and it can work for you, you can definitely get a good deal with it. And you could lock your rate, save you a little bit of time. So there's definitely things you can kind of do in that space. Um, we have a couple clients right now over at Kahoff Spring Ranch. I was over there today doing a, a walkthrough. And another one of my clients also is going to be closed in January, but because the interest rates went to, you know, are probably going to go higher and higher, he's a little scared. So I went in there and they were very, very receptive to the idea that because of economic hardship that we could probably, they, they're going to talk to the higher ups and see if we can get some money for a 2-1 buy down or something like this. So right now the new home companies, except, except for Toll Brothers um, in El Dorado Hills, they're open to communication and conversations regarding what's going to happen. So I would say if you're someone looking for a new home build, new homes the way you want to go, um, I think the standard inventory, like I said, is where you're going to hit them the hardest. I think you're going to get the best deal, best bang for your buck there. I think also that, um, you know, right now, if you get into a contract for a home and you're maybe like four or five months out, it could be, you know, you could be seeing a lot higher interest rates. So factor that in also. Factor it in. You know, no one's got a crystal ball and no one can really foresee exactly what the interest rates are going to be at. But everyone that I've talked to has basically, there's not one person I've talked to that's thought the rates are going to go down anytime in the next six months. So just kind of keep that with a grain of salt. I think everyone's gotten to the idea and everyone's got to the, the, the moment where everyone says, you know what, look, we get interest rates are going to go up. That's just part of the game. Um, and now you're going to make your decision. Like I said before, is that I do think in this market, it's going to be divided up between the people who have to sell and want to sell. The have to sells are just going to throw them on the market and see what they can do and probably might even lose a little bit of money on it. The wand people who say, you know what, I want to sell, but I don't have to sell. Those are the people who are probably going to wait to see how the market does. Now for a seller, I got to be honest with you, I, I can't see the market getting too much better for you. Unless of course you have a unicorn house. Unicorn house areas I'll describe as like maybe like an East Sacramento, Land Park, Serrano, Folsom, areas that historically have always been very, very strong. Now, an area that I would say also for some people to look into that's really not a whole bank breaker is Elk Grove. Elk Grove for the last month, two months has been a very soft market. So if you're anyone who likes schools, location to the Bay Area, you want to get something for like under $600,000 and you want to get everything ticked, all the boxes ticked, Elk Grove could be the spot for you. Elk Grove normally isn't that market that we see a lot of like softness, but for some reason Elk Grove is super soft right now where other markets like Folsom, like East Sacramento, like Land Park, like Serrano are still tough nuts to crack. All right, DS, I've been looking Gold River. All right, hold on. I've been looking Gold River and see some ridiculous high HOA fees. My HOA fee is $365 a month. I get no gate and I, I get what a lot of people are saying. Oh man, that's too high, that's too high. But I'll tell you something, like, um, you know, considering Gold River is where I was aiming for, 
There's not a lot of areas, unless you go away from the Powell homes, which the Brown houses or the Powell homes. If you go away from there, you're maybe in the hundreds. Those are nice houses as well too, but they just don't have the, the type of like high ceilings and everything, the Powell houses. In the Powell houses, you're probably gonna be paying low, 250 to maybe like 365 to even like some even bordering on $400. I totally get it. And HOAs are brutal, but at the same time, a lot of people are paying it. And Gold River is one of those areas that is one of the top kind of communities. That's how I justified it to myself, but I'm not a big fan of HOAs too, especially if you don't have a gate. That's going to be one of the things that's going to be hard about Gold River. If you look at like Marshall Village, or if you look at like Argonaut Village, there are some of the higher HOAs and there's no gate. All right. The, the, the high HOA, especially uh, townhomes. Oh, townhomes, those manor homes are just ridiculous. Those things are honestly like, yeah, that's crazy. The only thing about the townhomes that I will say is the fact that for the area, for the schools, it's still, I mean, you can still get yourself like, and you know, how can I say, the, the, there are, if you're driving down Cold, Gold Country Boulevard, you're going to see these manor homes, and there's like three of them. It's going to look like a giant house, but you're going to see a two and two on one side, a two and two on the other, and then a three and two in the middle. And a lot of people prefer, prefer the two and twos on the side, but yeah, the HOAs are brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Okay, next one. This one isn't even gated and no pond, pond pool or clubhouse. I don't think <laughs> our people, okay, paying that much is beyond me. Hey, I'm with you, man. I mean, honestly, I pay it and every month I cringe. It Gold River is brutal with the HOA. So yeah, it is what it is as far as Gold Rivers. If you guys have questions also about the market in general, about areas or whatnot, the nice thing about our team, some teams in the Sacramento Metro focus in on like East Sacramento, Whitney Ranch or whatever. We kind of do it all. We, we actually close deals even in the Bay Area. We work East Sacramento. We go up to Whitney Ranch. We go in El Dorado Hills, Folsom, Gold River. You name it, we go. So if you guys have an area that you're thinking about moving into or you're thinking, you know, how's the market doing? Is it soft? Is it friendly? Is it full of unicorns? Let me know. I'm, I'll more than happy to answer your questions. Also, I think I've hit maybe 30... 30 new home communities in the last couple of weeks. So if you guys want to know about some of the new home communities and what they're doing out there too, specifically, just let me know. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Tough market, Sacramento. Yes, it is. Okay, Whitney Ranch, not as overly friendly area to me. Whitney Ranch is fun. I think Whitney Ranch is a really good community. Um, what's called Jacqueline Nance over there. She's she's a really nice lady. They weren't too friendly with us when we were shooting in the pool, but no one would be happy with video cameras in the pool area. Um, I do think the Whitney Ranch area, though, is a nice area, although it is a little far away. I have only ran into nice people in the Whitney Ranch area. I think, um, I, I don't know, I, those are the only people I've run into. Everyone seems pretty nice. Oh, well said on um, on yeah the the new home market. Like I think right now, what you're gonna see in the new home space is that the new home situation it's they're hurting. They're hurting probably worse than you even might think. All right, not a buyer's market unless home values drop down like really low. I gotta agree with that. I think that for the most part that right now people can be tricked to think it's a buyer's market, but if they actually go out there and start looking at houses. There's inventory. Like I said, there's a lot of bloat, right? Houses that have been passed over and over and over. These are going to be houses that maybe you revisit like, you know what? There's not a lot of houses popping on Friday. So let's go back and take a look at 123 Elm Street. It doesn't really have this. It doesn't really have that. But it's been on the market a while and maybe we can get a deal. So this is kind of what I'm seeing for the inventory. But Fridays are still so, so like there is like barely any inventory out there that you know, I would love to see it switch into a buyer's buyer's market, but that's not going to happen for a while. In fact, this is kind of a negative market. Like I said, if you're someone who like needs to buy, you know, you got to jump in, you got to do what you got to do. If you're someone who needs to sell, you got to do what you got to do. Now, if you're someone who wants to sell or wants to move, like, you know, you're going to be on the fence and the fence is a hard place to be, but I see a lot of people right now with these interest rates up, you know, and it's just they're on the fence. They're saying, you know what? I, I don't think this is the market for me. And I get it. I mean, it's a tough market to be in. It's insane to me that we've gone up so fast in our interest rates. I thought going up to fours was crazy that we went up so fast into fours. But now we're already talking about sevens. And now people are talking about eights just like it was like easy. Hey, eights, we're going to be there pretty soon. So I think it's a scary market for a lot of people. And I think people have to realize that um, that they need to either jump in sooner than later or it's going to be hard. Even unless you are a cash buyer. And then I do think towards the end of this year, beginning of next year, I think the market is going to be so nice. 
nice for you. It's not even funny. But I do think for people who are looking to finance, it's going to be one of those things where even if a house drops maybe $20,000, if you're like, you know, financing at 8%, is it worth the wait? It kind of evens itself out. So I would say if you're looking, start looking soon. See if you can eye something you like. It's not the best market in the world for either a buyer or seller. It's just not right now. And now that we're moving into the colder season of the year, it's probably going to get a little colder, worse. And I think like for realtors, I think we're definitely having a thin, thinning of the herd in the real estate uh, community as well too. So it's, it's going to be a tough market. I think until maybe springtime um, is going to be the telltale sign to see if we can rebound a little bit. I don't know. It's 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 going to be really, really tough. Like everyone's like, yeah, you know what? Once inventory comes back, we're going to see prices drop. Interest rates are high. I still don't see a lot of new inventory popping up Fridays. And I don't know once we switch to the new year in spring rolls around, I don't really know how much inventory we're going to see popping up. See, here's a trick. Okay, let's say you have someone who who bought a house maybe five years ago, right? So the last couple of years, they did a refi. So they got their rate down to 2.75 and they're sitting pretty in their house. Now, you know, they're thinking to themselves, you know what, maybe I'll sell my house. Okay, they sell their house, they make some money, they jump into the market. If interest rates aren't low again, you know, there's just no way they're going to jump into a market that they're going to get an 8 7% interest rate when they're sitting pretty at a 2.75. It just, for me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I just don't know where this inventory is going to come from. I don't know what's going to motivate someone to say, look, I'm going to sell my house especially if they need to get into another house. Because like I said, like if you locked in and you refinance at a 2.75, it's so it, it's going to be so hard for you to just say, look, we want to move to Folsom. We want to sell our house in Fair Oaks. We're going to make some money on our house in Fair Oaks. And then, you know, we're going to forget our 2.75 that we were financed in our house in Fair Oaks. And we're actually going to buy something in Folsom and we're going to jump into a rate at 8%. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I don't know how, met, how much inventory is going to come up this spring unless interest rates can kind of settle down by them. So I think that's a telltale sign for, for that market. All right. Next one. The other areas are okay. And this is what we're talking about is um, I put a poll up later about the areas. So the other areas are okay, but my wife thought Grant Bay had a Beverly Hills vibe to it, certain parts. It's far more upscale than anywhere else. I do like Grant Bay. I think Grant Bay has always been one of those spots that people love. Eddie Murphy lived there. You know, I think we had another a 49er live there, Sacramento Kings. It's a very nice area. I would say if you are looking in Granite Bay, though, there are certain areas and communities of people that I've seen favored. So, um, you know, reach out to our team and we can work with you and show you some of the communities. I like Granite Bay. I think Granite Bay, and I think what I've seen is some of the communities have actually just kept going up in price and some of them have kind of flatlined a little bit but the name grant bay if you are looking for something in sacramento um the schools are fantastic the location of roseville and shopping is great they really really big build big in granite bay so what you're saying is like you're not gonna see a lot of houses underneath 3,000 square feet unless you go near joe rogers road and get some of the ranch style homes so i do think that grant bay is definitely a nice nice spot um, you have really large streets. You got really like estate type homes when you're driving around. Really, really beautiful area. All right. Next one. Cash buyers will not come when they can earn 4% on treasury LOL. Come on, Mark. A small fee for perhaps a small fee. Look, here's the thing. I got to be like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I think that at the end of this year, cash buyers are going to come into the area like they normally do. And I think they're going to get smoking deals on houses in, and they're going to have these rental properties. I've already seen it happen. I've already put a couple in contract and I have a few more cash buyers who are looking right now and they're pretty much going to be buying a few now, a few later, and they're going to go hard towards the end of this year and beginning of next year. And I see it as a good, good time. If you're looking for a rental in Sacramento, if you've got cash. I do think that at the end of this year, beginning of next year, sellers are going to get desperate. And I think you can get some good deals, but also know the areas because in Sacramento, you're going to make some good money because our rental, rental market is good, but not all areas are created equal. So know what areas you're looking into. Um, like I said, for me, I, I really like the, uh, what's called, uh, 
Oak Park I like, Tahoe Park. I like anything near the UC Davis Medical Center. I also like North Natomas because um, it's near the airport. It's near downtown. Um, I also like the Rosemont College Green Area because it's near Sacramento State. Um, college students eat up all the, all the rentals usually there. So anything available goes sky high. These are the areas that I prefer, and these are the areas that we work with our investor clients to jump into. All right, next one. Okay, I can agree, life happens, and sometimes you have a nice buy, but come on, folks. These rates are going to push home prices further down. You don't have a way forever, maybe just a few months for pricing cycles to price in lower with more inventory. Plus, just because you can afford something now doesn't mean you can tomorrow. Some people will lose their job soon, period. It will happen. So I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense for people to dive in feet first unless they have a ton of savings above and beyond their down payment. I will say one thing. If you are looking to buy a home, it is something that you really, really need to consider as far as your payment, right? You need to understand that like there's no guarantee interest rates are going to go down anytime soon. Um, so you really need to feel comfortable about the payment. It's hard because a lot of people I know have been waiting to buy, but at the same time, like you don't want to get those two o'clock in the morning sweats where you're thinking you might get like laid off because your job you know, you want good job security and you want to be able to afford the payment. Um, there's nothing worse than getting into a situation where um, your mortgage payment is just a huge stress for you. It just like I've seen clients and that's happened to them and it breaks my heart because they're just, you know, they're itching to jump into the market. They're first time home buyers, um, but the payment gets to be too much. So I would say, yeah. Um, now, here's the thing. Life does happen. Now, now, like I said, there are people like I define the needs and the wants, right? The needs are the people, buyers specifically, were, are the ones who are like renting out a place, right? So in Sacramento, let's say you rent out like a four bedroom, two bath house in Sacramento, Rosemont, the areas I mentioned, right? So you're paying between $2,700 and $3,000 a month. So what does that mean during the course of the year? You're spending over $30,000 in rent. So let's say a house dips maybe 20 grand. I still think that even in this market, it still makes sense. So for me, I'm not too worried about it. And I think that if someone's looking to rent, um, they might want to look in, in you know, new ways, what the lender we always kind of work with, um, one of our preferred lenders. But at the same time, I will say, talk to a lender, figure out where you stand as far as getting pre-qualified. Maybe this isn't the market for you, but I think home ownership is such a great thing. If I look back on how much money when I was younger I spent on rent, I mean, that right there is a house. So I'll say anyone out there who's looking to, to, who's renting, those are part of the category I would say need. You need to buy. You need to get something that's your own. Be smart about it. Don't you jump into anything. But I do think that home ownership is the best thing in the world for people looking to rent. And for sellers, you know, if you need to sell and it's like maybe something that, you know, you got to move with the kids, you're getting older, I don't know, some kind of problem, like really evaluate it right now. Um, because it's not great for sellers either unless you just have that one house in Los Lagos in Grant Bay and it's dialed in perfect and you're getting a flood of people. Like it's just a hard sellers and a hard buyers like situation right now in this current market. So just, you know, just be careful. All right. Any thoughts on Elk Grove? Love Elk Grove. I think right now one of the things that I always say about Elk Grove is the fact that you can kind of get everything you want in Elk Grove and still be underneath the like $600,000 mark. <laughs> Two years ago, that was maybe about under the 450 mark. Um, but I like Elk Grove. I think everyone, you know, the 757, I see a lot of people diving in there because the Franklin School District. Uh, 758 is pretty good as well too. It's probably my favorite zip code just because I like the man-made lakes and I like Laguna. The vibe of it for me is really nice. I think you can get a little farmer, I think, uh, farmy in the other zip codes in Elk Grove as well too. But I like it. I think Elk Grove is a great spot. Now, a lot of people always ask, well, is Elk Grove popular just because it's close to the Bay Area? And not so much. Okay, so there's a lot of things about Elk Grove that I like. Number one is close to downtown. You know, there's still a nice vibe in downtown. Elk Grove is nice. It's not a, it's, it's pretty it's pretty boxy, you know, there's a lot of track going on in Elk Grove, especially in the 757 and 758, but I do like the area. It's definitely like family friendly. It's definitely like, you know, a lot of single family homes, um, a lot more than apartments and condos. There's a lot of single family homes. So Elk Grove, I like that. Now, the reason why Elk Grove seems to be so popular in our market is because also people love the schools over there too. So if you, if you moved somewhere where schools were important to you, you're looking at certain areas 
in Elk Grove as far as price point, as far as what you get, it definitely has that rounded edge everybody likes. Elk Grove is a crazy place too. If you live in Elk Grove and you've been born Elk Grove and you've gone to school in Elk Grove, that's where you're gonna stay. I would say nine out of 10 people who I know that are like diehard Elk Grovians, they will stay in Elk Grove. They won't go to any other market. They love Elk Grove and that's where I are. So, you know, all right, I'm down for farming. Okay, now here's the thing, Juan. I will tell you this, and this is a huge thing for Elk Grove. Okay, in the area, in the in in the farming kind of area, Sheldon Road and everything too. Before you pull the trigger on a house, make sure of two things. One is no fire insurance, which there's not too much of Elk Grove that is really. Number two, and this is a huge one, a lot of Elk Grove in the farmier areas does not have internet. Or it, the, oh, sorry does not have fast internet let's just say it has frontier net which is satellite it's not even like it you can't even some of the areas you can't even get AT&T satellite so I will say though just be very very like if you go in the farm your areas in Elk Grove I know we've all watched those Hallmark movies and they're awesome and you know the you know live in that life but just make sure the internet's solid too because we also live in a realistic world where we have zoom calls um netflix we got spotify music we have everything smart homed out and so if you're running on satellite it could be very much a pain we've actually ran into that with a few clients and you know we definitely check the sat the the internet straight up now we actually a, a house that i actually closed on in elk grove that i was selling had frontier net and um you know i kept on the listing agent it has frontier net it has frontier net and at the end of the day we closed the deal and then she came back to me and said hey look is there any other internet out there if you've got frontier net out there and that's all you got that's all you got for right now now xfinity is doing its thing out there slowly but surely and when that happens it's gonna be interesting but just be very careful that like i would even say if you see an address on zillow that you really really like go to xfinity's website and just type in that address go to at and website and just type in that address and see if internet's out there that's a huge thing Juan, no problem man i mean we can't live without our internet i mean how would i do these live things this it would be just crazy <laughs> i have times i can wait uh, but afraid others are thinking like me and also worried cash buyers will come out and swoop up the houses um i want yeah okay here's the thing that i'll tell you i i get where you're freaking out about right um my thought is this it's not like you have to sit on the sidelines forever. What I'm just telling people to do is um, to start looking, start knowing what they want, knowing what areas they want, and just keep an eye out for them. Who knows a house that you want it might not be a popular house. It might be something that you see and you're like, for some reason or other, I love this house. And then just wait on it and see if it works, you know? Um, the only thing is, and like I said this before, is I just don't know. I just really, really don't know where the inventory is coming from. Everyone keeps mentioning the idea that, oh my God, you know, we're gonna get these, in, in, you know, we're gonna get inventory. Inventory is gonna come out and then all of a sudden prices are gonna drop. And I'm sure we're gonna have a, all this talk coming up about foreclosures, right? Oh, foreclosures here, foreclosures there. I mean, like, I don't see our inventory coming back during this time of the year, during you know October, November, December, and January. We're still decent weather in Sacramento here, but it's going to start getting rainy. It's going to start getting you know like cold and everything too. And I just know from experience um, that this right now isn't going to be the months where we gain back a whole lot of new listings on Friday. So I would say if you're looking for a house, don't expect a Friday to roll around and there's going to be a hundred new listings in Gold River and you're going to be excited. It just is not that market. Now, I will tell you one thing though, is I do think if you are working with a real estate agent, you know, put them, you know, put them on, you know, see if like they, they can reach out to other agents. A lot of agents also have a lot of stuff off market, right? Some people are like, yeah, we're waiting until spring or summer, or we have to redo the floors or whatnot. So I would say also you can, you know, as a realtor, go after someone like as far as like area, like for example, we have some clients looking specific, actually we have three sets of clients looking in Gold River. Um, but one client that we are trying to get in sooner than later, cause they're just, I mean, the, it, basically we flyered the area we sent out a mailer and we actually got a couple of people to give us a call so you can do stuff you don't, you don't have to wait for the mls to provide you can go out there and just hustle and get kind of get it done for your client but at the same time it's going to be hard during these last few months to actually get any type of inventory that's going to make any type of sense for anyone all right let's get some more questions all right hold on 
All right, great info. Lennar definitely did a great job positioning themselves in the market. If you guys have not seen my video on Lennar, it's really, really interesting on how they're trying to position themselves as like affordable luxury. Like, you know, on this channel, I'm not a big fan of their customer service. They seem to only care about their, their bottom line, which for me, I think, you know, of course you want to make money, but at the same time, you want to give a customers a great experience. A lot of them are first time home buyers and you don't want to be that way. But, you know, I got nothing to do with Lennar's politics as that goes. But as far as them making money, as far as them kind of crushing it in this market where I'm seeing a lot of new homes companies dive, Lennar is definitely positioned correctly. I mean, they're so smart. Like I said in my video earlier or uh, that I released last week, Lennar always gets to the party first. They always get to those areas. Like in, like everyone's saying right now, oh yeah, you know, um, in Folsom Ranch, they were one of the first people in Folsom Ranch. It's just that those communities they did already sold out and they're into their new communities. They've already been there. Elk Grove, the same way. They were building in Elk Grove before Madera Meadows was building out there too. So they're super smart and they know where other builders are buying and they get in there and they build sooner. They build a little bit more like, you know, they, they angle themselves. And then when like, like in Eldorado Hills, when Toll Brothers walked in the door, all of a sudden you see prices get slashed. They sell off the rest of the community and they move on to the next. They're very, very smart. If you know an area in Sacramento called Blackstone up in, up in Eldorado Hills, that's a Lennar community. It was perfect. It was our affordable version of Serrano and it worked and it's gorgeous community clubhouse the whole nine yards so lennar is one of my like the smartest companies out there as far as new builds go so i tip my hat to them not a big fan of how they kind of treat their customers but do they build a good home yeah they build a good home you can't you can't you can't really uh shade them for that all right then try to uh, underpay vendors. Yeah, Lennar definitely does not have a great name recognition for vendors, for like all that stuff. I mean, another thing too to note about Lennar is they, they, instead of actually like working with vendors, they'd rather actually buy the entire company and like have it be a Lennar company. That's why they own their title company, the mortgage company, part of the solar company, if not all the solar company at this point. So just, you know, keep that in mind. All right, thanks for the comparison video. I lived in the Bay Area, SF, Oakland, Danville, and just bought a house in El Dorado. When do you think it would be a good time to enter the Sacramento market as an investor? Okay, sure, here's my thought for an investor. If you're someone who's looking to buy an investment property in Sacramento, I already named the areas. I like North Natomas, I like Oak Park. I do like uh, Rosemont, the College Green area too. Um, what I will tell you though, is if you're a cash investor, I would say, you know, it starts now and it goes until you find that house. I would say the the more you get towards December and January, the better deals you're going to find out there. I would say walk, don't run. Um, I think sellers are going to be hurting, especially in that price point of like maybe like, I don't know, maybe the 400s and five 500s around there. You know, I think you can get some good deals. I've already been getting good deals for cash buyers. So, but I do think that as the year, as the year progresses and sevens maybe turns to eight, I think you're going to see even more deals on the market. So I think for cash investors, I think you're good to go. Now, as far as, um, investors who want to buy a piece of property and finance it, it's tough. Um, I would say you got to pencil it out. I got to, I, you know, give me a call if you feel like it. We can see, we can run some numbers. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but we can definitely run some numbers and see what's up um, as far as that goes. But I think for investments, I think you're going to see some, you know, I think you're going to see some Black Friday sales happen in the Sacramento area towards the end of December. Um, January, maybe even as early as November, depending on when the interest rates, if the interest rates go up to eight, I think you're going to see a lot of stuff sitting. A lot of people also who have been doing flips. So you're going to see a lot of half flips out there as well too, trying to, trying to sell. So I think, I think it's going to be an interesting market, but I do think that um, towards the end of this year, for sure. All right. Carlos, just tuning in. Thanks so much for your help with my house plan today. Not even a problem. Like I said, uh, Carlos, I don't want to give too much of your information, Carlos, but um, he was actually uh, at Kehov Spring Ranch, and we went in there. I talked to, I think it was David over there, and um, they were very receptive to the idea of helping uh, along someone so they can get their house with economic incentives. So um, that's a good thing for people who are looking as far as that stuff goes. Um, like I said, for us, as far as, um, as working with clients, not only do we, um, you know, get, you know, register people. We also like today I went to Keha, we did a walk through the house, took about maybe two hours to go through it, realized that the house that was, that they were purchasing did not come with a bathtub that they had paid for and ordered. So Keha, Keha is nice. They're on that too. Um, 
so I don't know. I think, I think at least for me, um, it's going to be an interesting road towards the end of these months for the new homes. But I think Carlos, they're going to, they're going to take care of you. So I'm happy about that. Okay. Next question. All right. Are cash investors generally looking for smaller homes, less than uh, 2,000 square feet for rentals and flips? Would be nice if they're not interested in the same houses, LOL. <laughs> yeah, okay, so for, for the most part, you're looking at cash buyers. They're trying to either get a very, very inexpensive three and two or a little bit more expensive four and two for rentals. Usually the four and twos hover around the 2,000 range. Usually like the three and twos can go anywhere between 1650, somewhere there. Location matters as well, too. Like I said, we try to get areas that um, the rental rate is pretty high and there's not a whole lot of rentals on the market. So we've been very successful with um, our clients so far. So if you are someone who's looking for an investment property, let us know. Um, but here's the thing, though, and this is this is the big edge I will tell you to people who aren't investors. It, unless it's a flip and then flippers don't care, right? But if you go into a house, it's really, really nice. You know, really, you, you can tell the person had like pride of home ownership. Um, they tend to want to sell to, to people, not investors. They want people. So what I notice is with a lot of the houses, um, I get questions straight up. Is your client an investor? And that's usually for sellers who have lived in the house for a while and they don't want to they don't want to sell it to an investor. So I would say uh, DS don't give up hope, you know, if this is a first time home for you too. It's like I think I think you know sellers are definitely more apt to sell to people who are going to start a family and enjoy the area themselves as opposed to investors. It's just for some reason they just don't like it. All right. Da, da, da. Next question. Interesting video. I'm uh, in the process of buying a house in Long Island, New York. We've started to see foreclosures from banks. You can tell it was flips gone wrong. Yeah, flips gone wrong. We're going to see a lot of that in the market that we have. Um, I've already been seeing a lot of houses that I go out and check out and they're like half flips, right? So like the kitchen's done. There's paint, like paint stuff on the ground and the bedrooms are kind of half done. There's a fan on the ground and everything too. So I think people right now, I think flipping, and I said this a while ago, I don't think flipping has been popular in Sacramento for a while now. Um, I think at least the last couple of years. I think right now, if you're thinking about making some money in our market, it's the rental market for sure. Not even, not even you know, I don't think it's even a comparison. So I think right now though, you know, even this is Long Island, I think in the Sacramento market, you're going to see a lot of, people who are trying to flip realize that it's just not working out for them and they're going to just throw something on the market to get rid of it. In fact, I would say that's probably some of the bloat we've been seeing on our current market right now. All right. Next one. Top luxury area in the Sacramento Metro. What do we got here? Granite Bay. Then we got Whitney Ranch in, uh, in Rockland. All right. That's number two. Serrano. No, East Sacramento, American River Canyon North and Serrano falling for a tie for last. Okay, that's interesting. All these areas, honestly, are areas you should check out. Okay, I'll go down the list. Grant Bay's got a lot of communities, a lot of people like Los Lagos, Eden Rock, Shelbourne, Wexford, really nice communities, big houses. We're talking like, if you're looking for something for 6,000 square feet, you want a yard, you want an estate, Grant Bay is where you got to go. Serrano, you got more of the views, golf course community. If you want to drive a golf cart around, if you want to have the clubhouse actually deliver you dinner at night, Serrano is a great spot. Kind of reminds me a little of the Southern California vibe. And for me, has some of the best views in all the Sacramento area. It's different than any of these areas by far. For me, there's just something magical about that area. East Sacramento, old school, affluent, fabulous 40s. If you're here for the holidays, go check out the light show. These are really, really nice homes. Um, they're, you know, some of them are built in the thirties, forties. They're really, really beautiful houses. Um, they're one of a kind houses and they're gorgeous. Not to mention in the East Sacramento area, if you drive through the forties or whatever, you're going to see that it's like really kind of tree lined streets. Houses are set back, very nice, elegant homes. Um, a lot of people compare it to Chicago, never been to Chicago, but a lot of people I showed this area to, they always compare it to Chicago. So I do really, really like East Sacramento. American River Canyon North is nice. If you go up Amer American River Canyon, one of the nicest drives you can go up. Then you hit the waterfalls and you go even higher and that's American River Canyon North. Now, the only big problem that I have with some of these houses are that they're not, not a lot of them have open floor plans. They're very compartmentalized. So you'll walk in there and you'll see a room and you'll say, oh, 
I'm not sure what that is. And you'll look over there. So the floor plans can tend to be a little more Tahoe-y, kind of broken up. And that just doesn't work for some of my clients. Um, but it's gorgeous, great views. Folsom has always been one of the strongest markets in the Sacramento metro. Love, love, love Folsom. And when I talk to people from the Bay Area, it's weird, but people know Folsom. They might not know Elk Grove, Serrano, Whitney Ranch, whatever, but they just know Folsom. And so a lot of them will only settle for Folsom. So Folsom tends to be very, very popular. And for me, American River Canyon North, love that area. It's beautiful. But like I said, some of the houses tend to be a little bit more like broken off. You know, they have that, like when you walk in the door, they have that living room where like back in the day, mom and dad would put the plastic furniture and then you keep walking. Not a big fan of that. I like the open concept. I like high ceilings. I like if you walk in, you get the staircase vibe. That's what I see a majority of people liking. In American River Canyon North, it's not easy to come across that floor plan. Okay, Next, is Granite Bay worth it? No. Okay, so the Granite Bay, the place everyone voted as the number one luxury spot in Sacramento Metro, they're saying it's not worth it. All right, I would I would say this. I would say if you look at the comps in Granite Bay, if you look on how it, how it's been doing, how it's been increasing value, I would say that Granite Bay is one of those spots that name recognition in the Sacramento Metro. A lot of people might not have heard of Granite Bay outside of Sacramento, but Granite Bay has been kind of like that spot ever since the 80s. It's been the it spot. Now, Serrano has taken a little bit of the, a lot of people going in the Serrano area, but Granite Bay has always been that space. If you're looking for a big house, a state home, I don't know. It doesn't, I don't know if it gets better than Grant Bay. If you're looking for something in the 6,000 6, square feet with a lot of land, lush land, Grant Bay is pretty sweet. All right. Next one, stay in the Bay Area or move to Sacramento. All right, we got 57% saying out of 65 votes, we're moving to Sacramento. I like that. So what I'm saying there and why I put this poll up also is the idea that um, I do think that even though a lot of people are saying, hey, you got to go to work, you got, you can't like, you know, do the whole Zoom thing. I do think Sacramento has gotten somewhat of a different reputation where people are looking at Sacramento different than they did maybe five or six years ago, which I do think is going to help us. So all, all the people looking to buy houses or bought houses in the area, I do think that we've got this attraction from the Bay Area. And I think a lot of people have been moved up to the Bay Area and their friends are seeing their houses or they've taken a couple tours here and they do realize that Sacramento is not that far away and what you could get here is a really is really delivering a good bang for your buck so i think that this poll alone 65 people are saying you know what we love the warriors we love the niners but the you know the value add in sacramento makes sense to us i really really like that that made my night all right buffalo how is it going can you mc in uh edgefield whitney ranch possibly (laughs) uh okay uh JMC and Edgefield, Whitney Ranch, possibly drop in 1.129 million to 1 million. I'll be flying that way in from SoCal. I will find out. This is how good our team is. We will, my team will find out for you sooner than later, probably by tomorrow. Um, so text me and I'll let you know what we find out from JMC and let you know if they're going to drop. Um, I still think Whitney ranch is very, very popular, but with the interest rates going the way they are. And I think also with people saying, Oh my God, new homes, you know, they're going to build, they're going to take forever. A lot of people are scared from new homes. I think that this could be a, I think you probably, you might, you might see that, you know? Um, so yeah, send me a text and I'll get you that information tomorrow. All right. Uh, let's go to some more questions before I end it for the night. Do you like Lennar Holmes? Um, a lot of people said yes. Um, okay. For me, the only thing that I've never really liked about Lennar is the fact that their customer service and the way they treat their clients. But I will tell you one thing, though. Lennar does have I'll, – I'll, I'll give the devil its due. Number one is I like the pricing. Okay. I think the pricing model makes sense. And I do think that a lot of builders have got to clue into this, Right. People don't generally like to see a price tag of $500,000 walking in the door and they're leaving paying like six hundred dollars or $700,000. It's not a good feeling. You don't feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Lennar keeps it close to what they advertise and it's really, really, it's, you know, it, 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 it's smart. And I think and I hope more new home companies will kind of go this way. Um, Lennar, I think, 
you know, if I was going to go the Lennar way, um, I would probably, I would say they have some nice floor plans. I think they don't really have the upgrades that other companies like Taylor or Toll Brothers do, but I do think they still have the floor plans. So if you went with, you know, Lennar, I think you could definitely get a contractor in there to, to take care of, you know, make the house amazing. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, here's the thing. If you look at Blackstone, Blackstone was a Lennar built community. All the homes, I mean, majority of the homes over there were Lennar. So if you go into some of these homes, you, they've, they've brought in contractors. They've done some amazing stuff in these homes. It'll make you even question, is this a Lennar home? I know, I know a lot of people about Lennar homes. Don't, don't hate me for that. But I do think Lennar homes offer very nice floor plans. I love their pricing. And I think as far as strategy, they could be the smartest new home builder by the way they buy land, by the way they develop their communities before anyone else does. And by the way, somehow they have a crystal ball to know which areas are gonna be popping and not. Um, that El Dorado Hills thing, oof, still love that. I mean, what they did there was crazy. Okay, so, you know, I, my guess is they knew Toll Brothers was buying a piece of land or bought a piece of land there. So they bought right near where Toll Brothers was gonna build. What does that do for their homes? That means if Toll Brothers prices go, let's go 1.5, 1.6, that means all the people that bought Lennar homes are also going to be lumped in with the Toll Brothers homes. Maybe not as much now, now that people know who, you know, builder names and everything too, brand recognition, but it still puts you next to these very, very expensive houses that are being built. So they took care of their clients on that side. Um, and they sold at a higher price point than they normally did in the metro area, but they killed it up there. They did fantastic. And now with their few remaining homes, slashing and dicing and getting rid of those things, Lennar is definitely one of the most savvy strategic builders I know, bar none. All right. Who's shopping for a house this weekend? That was last weekend, not me. So like I said, I think what we're seeing right now is that a lot of people right now are on the fence. Interest rates are putting them not only on the fence, they're probably a little bit over the fence at this point, kind of saying, eh, I'm going to go celebrate the holidays. It makes sense to me. I mean, we just had a dramatic interest rate change and people are kind of feeling it. Um, so what do I think if we go to with AIDS? I think our market is going to totally be in trouble. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if prices are going to drop because inventory is still going to be low. I don't know. I think we're going to be in a world of hurt. Um, but I do think that what we're seeing here is out of 71 people, 13% decided to brave go out there. And I would say right now with what happened this week with interest rates, my guessing is that 13% is probably going to be changing to about 9%. Interest rates are really going to be hurting people. All right. Buffalo. Hey, no problem. Okay. Two. I would consider Lennar and Hawkview. I thought those homes were fairly nice. They are fairly nice. And like I said, here's the thing for me. Um, I've got great contractors. I've got great people to put in stuff. Um, but I will say one thing is like, it's going to be for you, Toll Brothers versus Lennar, and if that extra price point makes sense. I talked to Stacy. Actually, I put someone in contract yesterday at Toll Brothers. And um, here's the crazy part. They raise their lot premiums but for certain lots are still offering $60,000 lot premiums. I don't know if that is a telltale sign into Toll Brothers, what is gonna happen in the next couple months, but it's gonna be interesting. Even these interest rates that hit are gonna affect Toll Brothers. So I don't know. I would say when you get out here, we're gonna take a little bit of a Pepsi challenge, check out Lennar, check out Hawkview, and see what makes sense for you. And you'll know, I mean, you're, you're a lender, so you're gonna you know straight up. All right, would you like, uh, should I keep dropping short video clips from the show? 81% said yes. Okay, I'm gonna stick with it until it gets really, really, oh, sorry, here, hold on, let me throw that up. Okay, should I keep dropping short video clips from the show? Now, I really stayed away from short videos just because I just didn't like it. I just, I, I hate how it looks on the channel. I think it's a cluster, but at the same time, I do realize that I do have a gift of gab and I can go for over an hour, not even a problem on Mondays and Wednesdays. So I wanted to create some short videos to get some nuggets that I'm dropping here. So that's what you're gonna get until of course you tell me that that's horrible, you don't wanna see it. And then I'll do another poll and we'll figure that out. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed the show tonight. It's going to be a little short tonight um, because I have to pick up my oldest daughter from the airport. So I'm super excited about that. Hopefully you guys have an amazing night and all this stuff. Um, if you guys have any questions offline, you know, and hopefully you know this by now, I'm not hard made in reach. My phone number 
it's either myself or Kathleen picking up the phone. We'd love to work with you. We'd love to talk to you, answer any questions you have regarding the market. Um, also, I'm dropping on off some short video clips on Instagram as well, Twitter, TikTok, all that stuff too. So that's it, guys. Anything else, let me know. And any questions for next Monday for myself and Aaron, let me know. Until next time, guys, I'm out of here. Guess what, guys? The video just ended. But don't worry, we have more videos just like that one right over there. And if you missed that red subscribe button during the course of the video, we got you covered right there. Hit that subscribe button. We promise to bring you some amazing content. We won't let you down. Now, if you're looking for a team in the Sacramento metro area to work with, we'd love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We always include a Zoom link down below. So book a time where we can talk to you a little one-on-one, -on -one, find out exactly 